The moon hung like a pale lantern in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the dense forest that lay before us. The air was thick with anticipation as our small group of adventurers prepared to embark on a nighttime expedition like no other. Armed with flashlights and a sense of curiosity, we stepped into the heart of the wilderness, unaware of the horrors that awaited us. The trees stood tall and imposing, their branches reaching out like gnarled fingers, ready to snatch us away. The forest floor was a carpet of fallen leaves and twigs, their crunching underfoot the only sound that broke the oppressive silence. We had heard rumors of strange occurrences in these woods, of whispers that carried on the wind and shadows that moved without a source. At first, our laughter and banter echoed through the trees, a feeble attempt to dispel the tension that hung in the air. But as the night wore on, an unease settled in, a gut feeling that we were not alone. Our flashlights cut through the darkness, revealing fleeting glimpses of the twisted forms that the trees took on in the moonlight. A rustling in the underbrush sent our hearts racing, and we pointed our beams of light toward the source. The beam revealed nothing but swaying ferns and the distant gleam of animal eyes. We nervously chuckled, attributing it to a nocturnal creature, but the unease remained, festering like a wound that refused to heal. As we pressed deeper into the woods, the trees seemed to close in around us, creating a suffocating canopy of branches. The moon's light struggled to penetrate the dense foliage, casting long shadows that danced at the edge of our vision. It was then that we heard it, a soft, melodic whisper that seemed to float on the air. We exchanged startled glances, each of us hoping that someone had played a prank. But the fear in our eyes revealed the truth. None of us were responsible for the haunting voice that now echoed through the trees. The whisper seemed to come from all directions, surrounding us with its eerie chorus. What is that? Sarah's voice quavered as she clung to my arm. I don't know, I replied, my own voice trembling. Let's just keep moving. But the whispering followed us, growing in intensity as we pressed on. It was as if the very woods were alive, the trees themselves conspiring to share their secrets with us. The words were unintelligible, a jumble of sounds that sent shivers down our spines. Time lost its meaning as we stumbled through the forest, our flashlights casting erratic beams of light as our hands shook with fear. The trees seemed to twist and contort, their shapes morphing into grotesque forms that seemed to leer at us. And still, the whispering persisted, growing louder until it drowned out even our own thoughts. We came upon a clearing, a small oasis within the oppressive woods. Moonlight spilled onto the ground, revealing a circle of mushrooms that glowed with another worldly luminescence. The whispering reached a fever pitch, the words now a cacophony of voices that threatened to drive us mad. I can't take it anymore, Mark shouted, his face pale and eyes wide with terror. Make it stop! In a desperate bid to escape the tormenting whispers, he stepped into the circle of mushrooms. The air seemed to still, and for a moment, the forest held its breath. Then, with a goot-wrenching scream, Mark was pulled into the ground, disappearing before our eyes as if he had been swallowed by the earth itself. We fled, our screams joining the chorus of the woods as we crashed through the underbrush. The forest seemed to fight against our escape, its branches reaching out to grab at use, its roots tangling our feet. But sheer terror fueled our flight and we burst out of the woods into the cold, clear night. We collapsed onto the ground gasping for air, our bodies trembling with a mixture of fear and disbelief. Mark was gone, swallowed by the very heart of the forest. The whispering had ceased, replaced by an eerie silence that hung in the air. To this day, I can't forget the haunting voices that plagued us in those woods or the terror that Mark must have felt as he was pulled beneath the earth. The experience changed us, leaving scars that no one else could see. And though we never return to those woods, I sometimes wake in the dead of night, certain that I can hear a faint distant whisper on the wind, a chilling reminder of the horrors that still linger in the shadows. The forest at night has always fascinated me. The way shadows play tricks on the eyes, the symphony of crickets and rustling leaves, and the feeling of being both vulnerable and alive all at once. So, when the opportunity arose for a nighttime forest expedition with my friends, I couldn't resist. Little did I know that this adventure would plunge us into a chilling nightmare that would forever haunt my dreams. Under the silver veil of the moonlight, our small group set out. Flashlights in hand, we ventured into the heart of the woods, <laughs> our laughter echoing through the trees. The initial thrill of exploration fueled our steps, and the forest seemed almost welcoming, its secrets waiting to be uncovered. But as we ventured deeper, the atmosphere shifted. 
the air grew heavy and the once familiar landscape took on an unsettling quality. The trees stood like silent sentinels, their branches interlocking overhead to form a natural canopy that swallowed the moonlight. Our flashlights did little to pierce the darkness, casting eerie shadows that danced on the forest floor. Laughter gave way to whispers, and whispers turned into hushed silence. A sense of unease settled in, each of us feeling the weight of the unknown. The crunch of leaves beneath our feet became a haunting echo, as if the forest itself was watching, listening. This is getting a little creepy, Sarah said, her voice barely above a whisper. Come on, it's just our imagination playing tricks, Jake replied, his attempt at reassurance falling flat. We pressed on, our breaths visible in the cold night air. A rustling in the underbrush sent a shiver down my spine. I turned my flashlight toward the source, revealing nothing but swaying ferns. We all laughed nervously, the tension too thick to ignore. And then, we heard it, a soft, distant humming that seemed to come from all around us. It was melodic yet discordant like a forgotten toonie from a Bionera. Our flashlights darted in every direction, searching for the source of the sound, but there was nothing to be seen. Did anyone else hear that? I asked, my voice shaky. The others nodded, their expressions mirroring my own confusion and fear. The humming continued, growing louder with each passing moment. It was as if the very forest itself was singing, its ancient melodies reaching out to us. Let's just go back, Emily whispered, her eyes wide with apprehension. We turned to retrace our steps, but the path we had taken seemed to have disappeared. The trees loomed like impassable walls, their branches tangled and intertwined, blocking our way. Panic surged within us, and we started to run, our flashlights darting wildly as we tried to find an escape route. The humming grew more intense, reverberating through the air and vibrating in our bones. It felt like the forest was closing in on us, its very essence suffocating us. We stumbled and tripped over hidden roots, our fear blinding us to the dangers of our surroundings. And then, we found ourselves in a small clearing, the moonlight casting an eerie glow on the ground. At the center of the clearing stood a circle of ancient-looking stones, their surfaces etched with intricate symbols that seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy. The humming emanated from within the circle, the sound so powerful that it seemed to vibrate the very air. What is this? Jake whispered, his voice barely audible over the humming. I don't know, but we need to get out of here, I replied. As we turned to leave, a figure emerged from the shadows, a woman, draped in tattered robes that seemed to blend with the night itself. Her eyes gleamed with an unnatural light, and her lips curled into a haunting smile. Welcome, she said, her voice a haunting echo that seemed to come from all directions. You've entered the Midnight Labyrinth, a realm between worlds where time dances on the edge of reality. Fear paralyzed us, and we could only watch as she stepped into the circle of stones. The humming grew even louder, resonating in our very souls. And then, with a burst of blinding light, the woman disappeared, leaving behind an echoing silence. We ran our fear-fueled adrenaline carrying us through the tangled forest. Hours passed in a blur, the night seeming to stretch on forever. And then, as the first light of dawn began to break through the trees, we stumbled back into the clearing where we had started. We collapsed onto the ground, gasping for breath, our bodies trembling with exhaustion. The stones were gone, the symbols erased as if they had never been. We looked at each other, our faces pale and eyes haunted by the horrors we had witnessed. Was it a dream, a shared hallucination? We may never know, but the memory of that night will forever haunt us. The Midnight Labyrinth, a place of ancient power and otherworldly forces, had forever changed our perception of the world. And though we returned to our normal lives, the echo of that chilling hum and and the image of the woman's haunting smile still lingers in the corners of our minds, a reminder that some mysteries are best left unexplored.